Ah, what's look going at Jeremiah. On, now, now he's driving in a car, doing nah, all that. Nah, nah. You, I'm actually um technically I'm on the clock right now at uh -oh. work trying to learn about wholesaling because I'm trying to get away from this place, right? But okay, well um, don't don't tell us where you're working or anything. I don't want to get you in trouble. Oh, so of course. What, what what's what area are you in? I'm in the DFW area. Um, and I'm in the group, like you mentioned real estate or wholesaling for real. Um, okay. and I, I just been trying to keep up with you guys these last three days. I just want to thank you and your son, um, for, for just, you know what I'm saying? Paving the way for, for people like us. Um, because a lot of people, you know, they give false information and things like that. So it's really cool to, you know, understand what you guys understand. But my question really is, um, when I am on these groups, right, and um, say someone sends me an email with properties, um, so I potentially should go through my comps first, and then from there, um, I've actually reached out to a couple cash buyers, right? There's um, one that gave me his business card. I'm on text message, text message basis with him, okay. um, and and like I wonder, like, how do you really? Because you went through the tiers of um, of sellers, right? You went through it pretty swiftly, but how do you even ask them really what tier they're in? You know what I'm saying? How do you go about that conversation? So, um, have you gone, if you go to freewholesaling.com, there's an entire section on there on how to vet your cash buyers. And I also did two videos in the YouTube flip with Rick group. Just search them in there. And I give you word for word what to ask them. Here's the thing is you guys, I, we're so used to catering into our sellers and you have to like, that's where you put on your best foot. I'm telling you when it comes to sellers, it's all business, man. I do not waste time with sellers. If you cannot answer the questions, I'm getting off the phone with you right. because I've got plenty of friends. I don't want to sit here and have a free conversation with you and I'm not getting paid to do it. So you always do the questions in order of importance. What do you think the most important question to your cash buyer is in your first past an initial hello? How you doing? Uh, what do you think the number one obstacle you have to overcome with a cash buyer is? Like how much they're willing to pay for the property? Do you have cash? Oh, do you have cash? Now, they'll all answer this yes, 100% of the time. Everyone's got cash. Like it's a, it's a crappy question, right? Right. Anybody can have like a, a quarter on them that qualifies you for cash. So simple. I just need a proof of funds. Can you just give me a quick screenshot of it? Or um, if you want, just fax over the first page of your re most recent statement in the last 30 days and send it this email. By the way, 80% of my cash buyers never get past that question. You know why? Because they ain't cash buyers. They're, they're all like, they're. we've been taught in this business. We all lie. We fake it till we make it. And listen, I credit the hustle, but like when it, the hustle comes to me selling, I don't have time. I don't want to waste my time. I don't sell properties to other wholesalers. Let's just respect each other's time. The minute they tell you this, and here's how you know they're lying to you. They're going to go on a five minute monologue. Just go, listen, have a great day. If you get the PF, uh, the POF, you know, give me a holler back and move on. They will lie to you all day long. I have somebody in my company their entire job is just vetting cash buyers because it's so important to us because they all waste your time. The worst thing you do is you get under contract, you find out they don't have any money and they just, they always have an excuse. Oh, I wired it. Oh, I dropped the check off. Oh, it's like, dude, like I just, you don't have time for that. Stop you work your butt off to get that motivated seller. Do not let that cash buyer like jerk you around. So it's all business when it comes to the cash buyer. You have to be. And guys, here's a, here's a huge tip. I, I made a huge mistake. I love talking to people. Do not become friends with your cash buyers. It will blow up in your face. I promise oh. you. Um, I had a guy buy like 40 properties off me during my prime when I was doing this all by myself. And they just kept beating me down on price and like a friend, I'm going to take you fishing. And then we started bartering and I didn't even know it. Oh. Like he would take me fishing and knock five grand off the price. Excuse I me? can tell you, I can go get a fishing trip for less than five grand. I can do it for, you know, I, I can go fish from the shoreline for free. I just do not barter your stuff. Make sure they answer the questions. Go to freewholesaling.com or to the YouTube channel. And I tell you exactly what to say. You are an order taker when it comes to cash buyers. 
Like honestly, just, hey, do you have any money? Uh, send me a proof of funds. I don't want to hear your story. I don't have, you have to guard the gate because they run you over. And when they're giving you excuses, wait till you get to the closing because it'll be 10 times worse. Then you're going to go over what you're offering the price for, make sure like their numbers match. And then they can mull it over and then you can reach back out to them. That's it. You, you want to get in and out, try to have a three to four minute conversation and then keep it business. The probably the biggest mistake is I felt bad for cash buyers and uh, I became friends with them and uh, I don't do it anymore. I, I will not deal with cash. I keep a distance from them. And Zach is extremely militant with cash buyers. He's like, he just runs them over, right? You have to guys. I'm telling you the cash buyers, that should be the easiest part of your job. So do not take their word for it, verify everything and move on. And I'm just here to tell you, if you strict to a strict discipline, you'll be fine. You have to be very flexible with the buyer, like with the sellers. You know, that's the one thing you have to work with when it comes to the buyers. That's it. I got to get taken care of because I want to get out of this terrible job I'm in. And the only way I can do that is I got one deal right now. I have the potential to make 20, 25 grand. I, you're not taking five grand out of my kid's mouth. And that's how you have to look at it. And once I realized that switch, I made probably an extra three or 400 grand every year since then, minimum. I was just a nice guy. If you're, and by the way, be honest with yourself. If you're a nice guy, like I'm a nice guy until you, until you burn me, then you don't want to be around me. But if you're a nice guy, guard the gate. Don't let them in. So nice guys work really well with motivated sellers. You guys, that's how I do so well. I connect with everyone. I found out me being a nice guy with cash buyers was my Achilles tendon. It was a nightmare. And what I did is I eventually, I hired someone to vet the cash buyers and deal with the final paperwork. And I only paid them like $1,500 a month. And I made like 10 times the amount of money on my deals. Hey, just a I, nice guy. So if you admit question. what your downfalls are, you can work on it. If you're going to constantly be nice to everyone, it worked really well with the buyers or with the sellers. Like cash buyers, they're brutal, man. Like they will run you over. Like they will treat you like you work for them. Um, I have cash buyers all the time when they go like this. I go, Rick, I saw you. We had this the other day. He goes, you only paid 130 for the proper 130,000. You want to sell it to me for 240? That's right. 100%. Is there a problem with that? Well, I don't think that's fair. I go, well, don't worry. You're off the list. You're not available for the property. Next. On to the on. next. I, I'm not going to sit here and defend on like, you weren't around when I had to write a big fat marketing check. You weren't around when I took thousands of phone calls to try to get that deal. So does that help you out a little bit with it? It's just, you've got to be brutal with cash buyers. It, it doesn't give you a permission slip to be nasty. Right. Just don't, they're not paying you for your time. Okay. And so when I get my cash buyers, you don't need 3000 people in it. You just mm -hmm. need four or five quality cash buyers if you can get it down to two cash buyers that are following the rules and just say, listen, John, here's the deal. I offer the property at 150. I got two offers right at 150. Give me your best and highest offer and I'll give you a decision in the next 30 minutes. Sound fair? That's it. I'm not in like, oh, he offered 152. You want to go 153? Then you're going to become a realtor. And I, to, the extra thousands, I can make that big of a difference in my life. Like, I, I just want to move on. So, Thank you so much. You got it, man. Sense. Can I else? ask one more question? Shoot. So, all right. So from the process of me receiving the email, right, in which yeah. somebody has like a property in Atlanta right now, I'm looking at um, actually three properties in Atlanta. Um, from that process to getting, you had showed us, um, I believe it was assignment of contract. So from that and I'm sure someone already potentially has it on contract from that to finding a cash buyer. It's still kind of blurry for me, I guess. So here's what I'm tell you is you told me you're like three days into it. Spend time at free wholesaling.com. I'm not okay. going to sell you anything. It's absolutely 100% free. Mm -hmm. Take the time, pretend you just wired me $10,000 and you're going knee deep in it. And I'm telling you, I, I answered, 98% of your questions. And then when you have questions, when you come on these one-on-ones, that's how you're going to get the most value. I, I give you all the credit for jumping on here and talking to me. And I'm trying to show everyone it's for real. I get people like, I just found wholesaling five minutes ago. What's it about? And 
that's why we created the course because if I had to explain every detail, I could only probably talk to one person a day. Completely at understand. That. I'll, so I'll get do out of that. Here. Yes, sir. Go and dive into it. Jump in and get involved with the lives. Um, I, I'm I've been doing this business so long, but honestly, I look at it through my son's eyes, and you got to understand. I was a desperate man when I went to wholesaling. I, I, I absolutely hated my job. So I, I worked for, uh, I, I'll just tell you guys, I worked for uh, enterprise rent a car. Um, wow. you know, they get, they give you the tools to see. They moved me nine times. I just started having kids and I just, I hated it, man. It just, it was terrible. I was vacuuming cars in like suits and I think they were paying me like eight, nine bucks an hour. And I got like commissions and, um, I was good at selling and that's how I made money. And I, I just got sick of climbing the corporate ladder. It just, it, it was never going to end. It just sucked. Like it's funny. It's funny, Rick, cause I'm wearing a suit right now. Ironic. Yeah, no, no. But I, I, so I was in South Florida out in July and August, um, because we never had enough staff and I would actually have to vacuum a car, wash it in a suit, sell these people thousands of dollars of product. And then I would come in at seven in the morning. I'd leave at seven 30 at night, hmm. five, Five and a half days a week. I, I I did it for twelve years, by the way. And then I pushed people to do it. And like honestly, it's really hard to sell stuff you don't believe in. So it's a good company. Just fell apart in the end. And uh, I was young. I didn't know what to do. But that's what my college education got me. It didn't like it didn't it didn't help me out at all. So I just dove in. I figured this out. Um, I paid a lot of gurus a lot of money. Uh, most of them tried to rip me off and. So that's why I got a little bit of a, and I, I see people I've taught in this business being gurus. I'm just like, you know, you just started like two years ago. You just, maybe you should dial it back and get a couple hundred deals under your belt. So, um, I, I find nobody asks gurus any quality questions. Nobody knows if they're for real. Everyone's a superstar on the internet. Guys, I've been doing this 20 years. Okay. I love this business for full disclosure. I didn't really I was nervous about Zach getting in this business. So um, he worked at a local grocery store. He's like, I can't clean one more toilet, dad. I'm never going to get ahead. I go, okay, well, let's talk about it. So I gave him a couple books to read and the rest is history. And uh, I just told Michael, okay, you're never going to learn this stuff in college. So um, he still went to college, but he got it done in like two years and um, the rest is history. So it's, uh, it, I don't, everybody comes from somewhere. I just right. want to get you to that, like the end zone. And I tell people like this, worst case scenario, even if you kept your job, if you could flip one or two deals a year, how much of a difference would it make in your life? It would make a tremendous difference. All okay. Right. Everybody told me I would fail at this. And when I brought home my first, I got a $3,000 check of 5,000. And then when I did 10,000, I just looked at my wife, I go, I'm going to change the, like the, the trajectory of our family. Cause we just come from like blue collar workers. We just work like, my dad's 86 right now. He still works. I love him to death, oh. but like, I don't want to take that path. Right. And uh, I didn't find out till I was much later in life. So if you guys, I, I swear, if you're in your twenties, I don't even hear it. Like it's you, you have the golden opportunity. Uh, it's so amazing what you can do in life. If you're in your thirties, your forties, your fifties, I don't care. So it doesn't matter where you came from. It's a matter where you're going. So go to freeholesling.com. I promise you will answer most of your stuff. I and will then jump back on next week. Thank you and so much. Take me okay, off the buddy. stage. God. You got it, man.